Hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome to the first episode of a brand new Terraria series here on the channel. So today marks the first episode of my brand new Terraria Summoner playthrough here on update 1.4.4.4. Nine, that's a lot of points. And as always, if you guys are excited for this brand new series here on the channel, do be sure to head down below the video and spend a second to drop a like to help get the series out there. So then, I've taken the liberty of already getting a character set up and indeed the world, and I have indeed used a seed. It is simply Python GB, it's an expert world, a small world, and it's actually a crimson world for once. So, let's head into it and let's see what is gonna happen. So, my friends, if you're new around here, you might want to consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on my future episodes from this series here. And just to mention real quick, the normal Let's Play series is coming back as well. It will, in fact, be the next video after this one. We're going to be alternating the two Let's Plays beside each other. And, uh, yeah, guys, it's going to be a lovely, lovely time. So then, the last and only Summoner playthrough we've ever done on this channel was actually done on Classic mode, even despite 1.3 having been out at the time of that series being made. So I figured we'd go ahead and turn up the ante just a little bit in that we're doing it on expert mode this time. And depending on how this series plays out for us, difficulty-wise, we may just wind up doing a master mode one later down the line. So this is going to be... Oh, hello! A leaf wand! We got that from a tree? <laughs> oh, dude, that's pretty awesome! I was not expecting that. Anyways, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by getting something amazing, I was going to say that this is going to be a very, very simple playthrough. I would like to go ahead and grab every summoner weapon there is, and I've already gone ahead and done the tallying. The amount of summon weapons there are, the normal summon weapons, is 21. There are 9 whips in addition to that that we can try and get. We've got 5 sentry weapons, and we also have ourselves a grand total of 12 Old Ones Army Sentry weapons, but since the Old Ones Army weapons are actually split into tiers, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go only for one of each of the Old Ones Army tier of weaponry. So yeah, you normally get four weapons per Old Ones Army tier, right? We're going to go for only one of each tier, because at that point we'll be able to just transmute them into whatever else, because now we have the Shimmer, don't we? So, in in total, that means we have 38 summon weapons to try and garner ourselves in this series. So as you can see, I'm actually trying to run away from these Slimos here because, well, I don't have any summon weapons just yet. And I can't take these guys down with melee because that's not a summon, is it? So, um, yeah. I wonder though, I wonder. Oh wait, I don't have any uh, sources of light. Uh, would it be cheating if I went ahead and used the guide to kill these guys here. I mean, the guide, he's not really any kind of damage, really. Well, I mean, technically, he's range damage because he winds up using a bow, right? But in terms of me, I mean, I'd just be using the stuffs that are around me, right? And the guide is around me. If I can get him to kill one or two slimes then maybe I could go ahead and use that to make some torches. Now, obviously, inside that large tree, what I am hoping for, more than anything, is a finch staff, because that would mark our first ever summon weapon of this series. The first out of 38. Go on, Colin. Go on, Colin. Take him out. Take him out. There you go. Good job there, Colin. I appreciate your help there, broski. Right, we really do only need just a couple of torches just to be able to explore that tree. And then we'll see what's in there. Now, obviously, there are certain weapons that are going to be way more difficult to obtain than others. In that total 38 number, that does include, I think it's called the Terra Prisma, which requires you to take down the Empress of Light entirely during daytime, which is something I have never ever tried to do in my entire time playing Terraria. Uh, oh my god, there actually is one! <laughs> no! The first tree! Dude! Okay, uh, that is absolutely fantastic! We actually have the ability to do damage to dudes now! Oh! Dude, I can't believe that. 
Oh, I love it when things go my way, my friendos. And it's on my own seed. The seed literally is Python GB. Did they make this seed especially for me? Is that something they did? I mean, probably not. This is probably just, you know, good fortune. But still, I mean, that's kind of cool, isn't it? All right, well, now that we can actually do damage to dudes, let's go ahead and maybe explore the world just a little bit more. And maybe, it just maybe, we'll be able to get some cool things done. Yeah, come on. Oh, my word, that finch is worse than useless. Look at him. Look at him. Just circling him as opposed to doing damage. <laughs> oh, this is going to be super rough, huh? Oh, jeez. I'm not going to die on my first episode, am I? Trying to navigate this world is going to be down near impossible, huh? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyways, uh, let's continue on. Oh, for goodness sake. Sometimes I feel like I can make these jumps, and then it actually turns out I really can't. So, um, yeah, that's just great. Uh, do we want to go ahead and grab ourselves a bunch of cacti? Yes, I think that would be a marvelous idea. Grab ourselves some cactus armor, get ourselves a rudimentary amount of defense, and also, of course, the thorns effect. Oh, good lord. There's one of these vulture dudes freaking coming after me. I don't want him to be coming after me, so yeah. Go on, Finchy boy. It's freaking bird fighting. You know you got dog fighting in the air. They're bird fighting in the air. Ah, oh, Finchy boy. You seem to be doing a way better job against birds than you do against the freaking slimes, eh? All right, well, I can't complain about it. Not at all, in fact. There you go. Uh, how about you take down these slimos as well? That would be rather lovely, I have to say. Come on, take those slimos out. I want to be getting round to the, uh, you know, cactus armor. That would be lovely. How many do we have here? 61. I think it's 75 cactus we need in order to make the full cactus armor. All right, well, we're up to 69 cacti now. Wait, does this continue up here? It seems to. Do we have any cacti up here, though? I mean, that would be rather nice, it has to be said. Come on. Oh, hang on. I've just seen something, guys. Have you guys seen something? Have you spotted it right beneath me here? Dude. Oh, my goodness me. This seed might have been made just for me. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant, isn't it? All right, well, let's see if we can get ourselves up here. Do a little bit of that. Uh, I'm thinking we maybe put down some ropesy doodles. There we have it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll explore this desert temple here. And within it, what I am not hoping for is the pharaoh's outfit. Alrighty, so just about ready to break through to the main desert temple here, which is wonderful. All we need to do is get ourselves down here. All right, very cool. All right, and now we need to explore this bad boy. So we take the corner there, we come down here. Oh, there's a bunch of gold coins right there. That's a good start. Hell yeah, dude. All right, so let's check out the chest here. <gasps> oh my goodness. This seed was made for me. I cannot be convinced otherwise. This seed was made for me. For any of you guys unaware, in the past, I went for the goal of trying to get myself the bundle of balloons. And it took me, I think it was 22 worlds, in order for me to finally get myself my first sandstorm in a bottle. And we get it in our first desert temple in this world here. I mean, come on. That is incredible, isn't it? Huh? I can't believe it. We've actually got a sandstorm in a bottle and a finch staff off the rip here. Ah, oh, I, I am I am beyond chuffed. I am absolutely beyond chuffed. Well, if you guys want this world for yourselves, if you want yourself an absolutely, literally perfect start to being a summoner, then yeah, check out the description down below. You can literally play this very world yourselves and have yourself literally the perfect start to being a summoner. Like, I, I cannot believe this. This is absolutely brilliant. So, according to the background music, there's actually an underground mushroom biome nearby. So, I think we're going to go ahead, maybe explore it. Maybe we can see if there are any heart crystals to be had down there. If there are, that would be beautiful. Oh, that would also be beautiful. Check it out, guys. We've actually got ourselves some gold up there. And the reason why we want gold is because I would like to be able to make myself the flinks coat. 
and it gives you some very, very minor, but very awesome summoner buffs. You get yourself, like, an additional minion slot and such. So, uh, yeah, let's grab this gold, and then, yeah, we're gonna go and explore that underground mushroom biome, okay? We'll see if there's anything cool over there, and if there is, amazing. If not, then I think we'll get ourselves up to the surface and think about making ourselves a little bit of a rudimentary base. So, it goes without saying, since this is simply a playthrough and not, like, a full-on let's play, we're not gonna focus all that much on the building side of things in the series. I mean, I'm not gonna make, like, crummy box houses, but I'm not gonna go, like, massively overboard with the building in the series, because at the end of the day, that's what I consider my normal let's play to be there for, you know? That is my let's play where I pretty much do anything and everything, including making nice-looking things. So, yeah, in this particular series, we're going to focus on progression, okay? So, of course, if that is your cup of tea, then do be sure to stick around for this series, my friends, because after a, quite frankly, perfect start like we've had in today's episode... I mean, you don't want to miss out on the future episodes, do you now? So then, a little bit of a side goal here. If we could get ourselves up to 35 cobwebs, then that'd be enough to make ourselves a bed. So, yeah, that'd be kind of handy dandy to get. Uh, there are some emeralds over there. Not really entirely sure that we're going to be finding many usages for those. Uh, but yeah, guys, we're going to go over to our left-hand side here. We're going to dig down. We're going to explore that mushroom biome. The great thing about already having access to our double jump here is the fact that we basically won't ever take full damage so long as, you know, we're on the ball in terms of, you know, double jumping before we die, um, so, yeah. <laughs> It's pretty cool though, isn't it? I still can't believe that we've got it like pretty much straight off the rip here. Let's be careful for traps. We don't want to be getting blown up or anything stupid like that. I had enough of the traps in the old legendary mode series. So yeah, if we could like not have too much of that in this series, that'd be nice. I'll tell you what else is nice. Check it out. Bottom left. Can you guys see it? Look at it gleaming down there in the water. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah, 120 health for your boy. And also a crimson altar for my troubles. Very cool. Got ourselves a rather large deposit of silver as well. And we've also got ourselves a good amount of cobweb to our left-hand side there. So, yeah, plenty of stuff to gather up here before heading up to the surface. Let's see if I can maybe... <laughs> I'd like to be able to have my finch come up here and take this guy out of the game. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Ah, when in doubt, we summon and have him focus on the dude who we want to have it focus on. Come on. Come on. Kill that dude. All right, now kill this dude right here. And then I can grab my silver. All right, now for that crawdad while I go ahead and do a little bit of silver mining. And then we'll grab the gold that I spotted before as well. And then we'll get ourselves back up to the surface. And yes, I know, I know. Some of you guys are going to be saying, well, Bison, you're taking worms out with your pickaxe. Guys, it's accidental, okay? It's not my fault that the stupid worms go into the freaking swing of my pickaxe. That's not my fault, all right? But when it comes to, like, the actual enemies, you know, the dudes who actually want to kill me, yeah, we're only taking them out with summoner weapons, okay? I just realized that one of the hardest to obtain summoner weapons right at the start of the game here, in fact, is, of course, the slime staff. Oh, man. Well, uh, there is, of course, one easy way of doing that. Well, I say easy. It really rather depends on how lucky I continue to be in this world. I am, of course, talking about trying to obtain a slime statue, hooking it up to a timer, and then just summoning in slimes to see if I could get a chance of getting myself the slime staff that way. Otherwise, the chances of us getting it in sort of the normal fashion, the normal way is astronomically low. So yeah, if we could get lucky enough to find ourselves a slime statue, then that would be absolutely fantastic. I don't know how rare or common those things are, of course, but you know, it's just a case of finding out, I guess. But look at this though. We've got ourselves some diamonds here. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Oh, that's a trap. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I think you're smart there, Terraria. Nope. Come on, Finchy. Take out the slime, dude. Take it out. <laughs> oh, maybe if I had more than one Finch, they'd have a way better ability of taking dudes down. Because right now, this guy is just sort of pooey, to be honest. 
Now, obviously, nowadays, mushroom biomes are actually pretty large. So what would be the chances of us being able to find ourselves some more life crystals sort of on the bottom layer, you know? We've got ourselves this top layer where the water is, but we seem to have all of this area still to explore, my friends. Also, this mother slime is probably going to give us some trouble here. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'd like to be able to clear it. Like, just get past. There we are. A little bit of that. There we are. All right. And then ew, we block this off. Aha! <laughs> and check this out. The good news is, as well, we have ourselves recall potions. So if we get ourselves into a bit of a sticky situation, we can at least get ourselves out of here with absolute ease. All right. Well, it looks like we do have ourselves some decent stuff around here, my friendos. We've got ourselves a water chest in addition to a life crystal. Oh, wait. There's a life crystal on my left as well. Oh, dude. Okay. Very cool, Terraria. Very cool. Uh, let's see if we can grab all this stuff, ideally without dying. There's a trident there. Of course, we're not going to be using it because we are a summoner at the end of the day. Uh, there's another life crystal, though, for your boy. Oh, no. That might be our first death, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, not unless my Finchy boy can do something about it. Either that or my little, uh, you know, parkour skills could always be on point, which they actually seem to be for what? <laughs> oh, good grief. I can hear someone. Who is it? Oh, no, it's one of those guys. Can I grab this thing? Okay, yeah, I can. If I'm very, very quick. Come on. Oh, no. Why have I got backwards controls now? Uh! Oh, that's right. I've got the feral bite thing going on because I was getting snapped up by the bats. They're not cool. Come on, man. We're just about done for that particular exploration trip. I mean, come on. Look at that. We've got 160 health to our name. We've got our first summon weapon. We've got ourselves a sandstorm in a bottle as well. I mean, come on. We couldn't have had a more perfect start if we tried. The thing that would really put the icing on the cake, though, of course, is us being able to make ourselves the full set of cactus armor. Now, as much as it is not necessarily a summoner set of armor, it is certainly going to be very, very useful at the start of the game here. So, if my finchy boy could do his job, that would be lovely. Here we are. What have we got here? 78. If I continue trying to get myself a bit more in the cactus department, then I might be able to make myself a pickaxe, potentially. All right, so putting down a workbench here real quick. Let's grab ourselves the... Oh, good grief. No, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. We have priorities here. Staying alive is uh, most definitely one of them. <laughs> Goodness me. Right, I'll tell you what. Let's just go back home here real quick, yeah? Uh, then we place down the workbench, and now we can get to what we were going to do. So starting off here, with the cactus leggings. We've got the breastplate here, of course. And finally, the cactus helmet. So there we have it. We have ourselves a permanent thorns effect and three defense, which is certainly better than nothing, my friends. I tell you what. Uh, the only thing is, I don't think we've got enough cactus for the pickaxe. Ah, man. Surely I've not mined up every single piece of cactus that's ever existed in this world. No way. I think I need maybe two more bits and then I'm good. Oh, good grief. And now apparently we've hit the jungle. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not entirely sure that I want to be uh, tackling the jungle just yet, my friends. I would, however, like to have both the herb bag and the can of worms because those are going to be very, very useful for the lovely things that are bait. For fishing. So, yes, the more of that we can get, the better things are going to be. All right. So, my friends, I do believe that the time has come to make ourselves a little bit of a base. And for any of you guys unaware, what I tend to do is I tend to spawn myself back at world spawn and then make my first base there because it just means that you don't need a bed. Not really. You can literally just teleport back here at any time without having to set your spawn point, you know? So, then, my friends, let's go ahead and make ourselves a bit of a start in terms of making a starter base and this starter base is going to contain a bunch of npcs now as much as i said i'm not going to be making crummy box houses i mean they are going to be sort of based on a box house but they're not going to be like proper box houses we're gonna sort of beef them up a little bit as much as i was saying i don't want to focus too much on the building part of the series i also equally don't want my builds to look just awfully crummy you know all right so down goes the living wood loom and that of course gives us access to quite a lot of other things i didn't mean to make that cactus workbench oh my goodness why am i so stupid 
Ah, oh, I like really didn't mean to do that. What I meant to do was scroll up and see what else I could make here. Look at that, a living wood workbench, for example. Definitely something that we are needing for this whole shaboodle, huh? Eh? Ah, but no, your boy decided instead, for whatever reason, to make a cactus workbench. When actually, I needed that cactus to make an upgraded pickaxe. Ah, oh, oh well, never mind. The good news is, of course, we've got ourselves rather a significant amount of wood from all of the trees that we chopped down at the start of the episode. So, it shouldn't be too hard of a thing to do to make this look good. Come on, Finchy boy, I'm gonna need you to do a slightly better job than you are doing right now. Oh, wow, well, that's actually a pretty good job you just did there. <laughs> all right. Come on, Finchy boy, go do your job. It is night time, of course, and as a result, we do need to be careful. Oh, look at that. That almost landed on the raincoat zombie. Imagine if it did. Oh, that really would have been the icing on the good luck cake for today's episode, eh? I think to make this base look just a tiny bit more interesting, what we'll do is we will go ahead and introduce maybe a little bit of height variation here and there. I mean, I'll probably do the job, right? Oh, yeah, that's more like the kind of damage I'm looking for. <laughs> Be gone, foul raincoat zombies! I am not interested in anything you're selling. Certainly not the crazy amount of death you're probably going to inflict upon me. No, 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 no. Uh, right, what am I doing here? I am trying to make a decent looking house, and these guys are making it very, very difficult. So why can't these guys just go away? That would be nice, wouldn't it? You know what? To make this place look even more interesting, I was kind of thinking that the roof should be made out of leaf blocks. I mean, why not? We have ourselves a leaf one that we very luckily got at the very start of the episode. So why wouldn't I go ahead and use them, eh? Uh, how does blue look in here? Eh, it looks kind of alright, but not entirely sure that it's going to be something we use for this particular base. You know what? As much as I was sort of trashing this finch a little bit earlier in the episode, when you go ahead and sort of, you know, re-summon it in, and it does like a whole bunch of damage like it is doing here... You know, I can, I can kind of see the appeal of it. Little Finchy, thank you for protecting my base. Man, can I not wait for it to become daytime? That one actually did almost land on the raincoat zombie there. Come on, Terraria, come on. I should probably not go ahead and pass up the opportunity to grab these fallen stars because, well, summoner weapons, they still require a little bit of mana, right? So, you know, still got to be relatively careful about not missing those bad boys out. There we are. Oh! <laughs> Again, so close, but so far, Terraria. I'll say this as well for the Finchy boy. It seems to take down airborne enemies way more easily than ground enemies, I feel. I mean, look at it. Seems to not really have too many issues with going ahead and taking these bad boys out of the game. Oh, really, guide? Really? I'm going ahead and trying to sort out my inventory? And you go ahead and open the door to the zombie who wants to kill me. Really? <laughs> hey, well, there you go, my friends. The one surefire way of knowing that what you're doing with your buildings is the right thing. We now have a merchant. Hello there, buddy. Oh, the traveling merchant is here as well. We've got a forest pylon off the rip. We've got the piggy bank, of course. Let's not forget about that bad boy, eh? Uh, right, now if I could, you know, be able to access it, that'd be great. There we have it. All right, well, let's check out this guy. What do you have for me? The DPS meter. Oh, wow, there's like three different accessories, man. Four different accessories, sorry. Whoa! <laughs> Look at this. If this was a melee playthrough, I would be beside myself with excitement right now. Having a katana, which naturally has a higher crit chance this early on in the game. And not just that, it's fully auto as well. That would have been a massive, massive win. But for now though, check this out. We have a bunch of accessories towards the eventual cell phone here. We'll sell the copper short sword and, of course, the shurikens because we just don't need them. In addition to the wooden arrows because, again, I just don't need them. Uh, right. The only thing is, though, we have just under enough to be able to buy ourselves all of these accessories here. Real quick, let's go through this. Uh, selling the diamonds will probably give us enough to be able to do this thing, right? So, boom. Yeah, very cool. Quite possibly the highest amount of accessories I've ever seen from a traveling merchant in one go. I always feel like you get one or two, but not 
four? I didn't buy the paint sprayer because it's not really something that I'm going to be using in this series. As I mentioned, I'm not going to be focusing all that much on the building. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of spending maybe a fair while uh, me going ahead and making this look all decent. But, you know, I'm not going to be making, like, super massive extravagant builds is what I meant before. So, yeah, I'm going to make this look all right, but I'm not going to go, like, massively over the top with it. This is pretty much going to be, like, my main base area. And if and when we need to make ourselves different pylon bases, then we will. But it's going to be more of a, a needs-must basis as opposed to me just doing it as part of a goal. Alrighty, so what do you guys think, huh? Time to go ahead and add the little leaf roof here i think it is and there we are my friends just about ran out of wood <laughs> this is a very wood heavy first base isn't it my friends i've got no issues with putting in the hard labor to get this done though so that's what we're gonna do ideally i'd like to have this done by the end of today's episode just so we've got ourselves a nice proper start to our summoner playthrough here my friendos so let me just grab myself a few more bits of wood we'll get back to adding on the leaf roof and yeah we'll have this done in no time if you didn't notice it already uh yeah we got this thing it's actually a new pet. Ah, oh, cool. He's kind of awesome, isn't he? A pet sugar glider. I, I don't know what that is. I mean, it looks like a bit of a squirrel kind of dealio. Um, uh -huh. All right. Well, I mean, as much as I may not know what it is, it's kind of awesome, I guess. All right. So there we are. And I purposely made it not symmetrical just so it can look maybe a little bit more organic. And you know what? I think we've achieved that pretty well here. Yes. All right, all that's left to be done is for us to add in some tables and chairs. So a table in there. We'll have ourselves a table up there. We'll have a table down here. And I'll tell you what, for the final room, we'll have ourselves a crafting table. All right, let's put that bad boy right up here. Make sure all of these are indeed suitable. Yep, they are. We've got ourselves a nursery. Very, very cool. And then three further NPC houses. <laughs> very good. All right, so all that's left to be done is for us to maybe decorate these rooms with the very little stuff that we have here. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Is there anything here that we can really put down? We've got a chest here. I mean, I guess that's kind of useful. Maybe we make one of these rooms into a bit of an alchemy station up until we get a proper alchemy station, right? Yes, seems like a good idea, doesn't it? For example, I put down a bottle right here. Then I can start putting my potion ingredients in here. There we are. Uh, uh, proper caps lock. There we go. And yeah, that means we can now start making ourselves some nice basic potions. For example, check it out. Some healing potions. And because we got ourselves a herb bag nice and early on, it means we have an opportunity to get ourselves some deathweed seeds. Let's see if we get them. Uh, no, unfortunately not. Water leaf seeds, though, that's actually pretty useful. There's the blinky plant seeds, which are very, very good. Yeah, deathweed seeds are usually the most difficult to get, in my opinion. But, you know, they're not massively difficult. You just have to get yourself over to an evil biome while the blood moon is going on. Or I think the full moon will also give blooming deathweed. You just gotta play the waiting game, basically. Whoa! We got a gold worm from that? Right, I know for a fact that we can put this gold worm, I think, into the shimmer. And I'm pretty sure it gives us an item that permanently increases one of our stats on our character. It's something I've not even done on my normal Let's Play world yet. See, the good news is, now that we've got ourselves a bunch of NPCs around here, it actually means that the sort of spawn rate of enemies is sort of naturally lower. So, yeah. Always worth making NPC houses as early as humanly possible, my friends. Believe you me. <laughs> All right. For now, though, I just want to go ahead and maybe add a little bit of a sort of hill here. So at least both sides of the house sort of exit to the same level. And then I will eventually put a sunflower out here. So we have the happy effect, which gives us a little bit of increased movement speed and further reduction to monster spawn rates. So then, my friends, we have ourselves a nice starter base. We have ourselves a very nice starter loadout with the finch staff, with the sandstorm of the bottle, the cactus armor as well. We have ourselves a nicely organized inventory and storage system as well, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, not a bad first episode, my friends if you ask me not a bad episode indeed 
But for now, it's going to be time to wrap up this first episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's first episode of our brand new summoner playthrough here on Expert Mode, please do be sure, of course, to drop a like beneath the video if you haven't already. If you guys are interested in the world seed, of course, as I've mentioned a couple of times, hopefully by now, you can head down to the description and you can find it right there. You'll be able to play on this exact world with me, but all I request is that you do not go ahead and spoil anything that's in this world, okay? I like to explore my worlds blind because at the end of the day, that's probably the most authentic Terraria experience there is. So, yeah, if you could have avoid spoiling this world that'd be fantastic but for now thank you very much for watching have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day thank you for all your support lately i truly appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next episode Bye bye